This is the Rising Goddess Podcast, and I'm your host, Michelle Torrance. This is a space where when we start diving deep, we're talking spiritual, mental, and physical. We're getting real and connecting with ourselves and others in the most intimate ways. We'll be talking all things sacred sexual, relationship building, womb healing, connection, and connecting with and through our bodies, how to use our sexual and sensual energies to create, manifest, and heal our lives in our individual and collective ancient feminine lines while intertwining our healing and connection with the divine masculine. We'll learn from amazing humans who take time and share their wisdom and sacred healing magic. Rising humans who are here in this world to be healers, teachers, guides, priestesses, warriors, shamans, and all divine sisters and brothers in rising. We'll get witchy, sassy, sexy, and saucy, talking all things that align us with our true nature and authentic selves, creating a community of divine feminine and masculine rising to be a massive part in this shift of world healing. So grab some green juice, light some cannabis, get your blankets, or sit by the fire. Let's rise up together. Catch you on the inside, dolls. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the next episode of Rising Goddess Radio. Today's episode, I'm really excited to share with you. Um, I was referred to our guest um, from Arden Lee, who was our last guest on the show, and I am so grateful that she referred Ani Baker to us. Um, Ani, if you are not familiar with her, you are about to be. She is an amazing, amazing soul. For 12 years, she worked as a special education teacher at the elementary level. She Teaching kids with special needs taught her um, most of the important things about being alive. In June of 2016, she got a birthday trip to Thomas Land, funded for one of her students with autism named Kingston. Um, she had the story published in the local paper, which led to features from CBS and ABC News, which not only doubled um, her GoFundMe goal, but led to the owners of Thomas Land flying herself and Kingston's entire family out to Massachusetts, where they closed down the whole park just for them to explore, as well as funded a week of long vacation for them. There's some news footage that I'll go ahead and post the links down um, in the show notes so that we can check them out over on YouTube. Um, but in August of 2016, she stepped out of the classroom to make her first documentary film about the public education system with Very Ape Productions in New York, which is a company run by her absolute favorite documentary filmmaker of all time, Sean Dunn. With his support and the support of a small team of filmmakers in LA, she is finally doing this. She's currently working on a documentary about sex education with in the public education system. Currently, tentatively, it's titled Sext with Ed in parentheses, so sex ed, but sexed, um, and will be available as soon as they finish it. So I know that they are working very hard on it, but this is such an amazing topic that we talk about. <clears throat> and we go down a few other tributaries of this river as well. Um, but it's so important, sexual education within our education system. And um, I think that bringing light to this and sharing her documentary when it comes out is really going to help us really change the dynamic of the public education system, which I have a, a strong passion about public education and ways that we can shift it to not only support our teachers and the educators and the administrative staff that spend their time doing this, the ones that who love it, but we can... Um, um, support our children and support them to work together as a team for um, education that is well-rounded and that truly supports the expansiveness um, as being a human instead of the constriction of it. So I'm really excited to hear your thoughts and notes on this. Head over to Rising Goddess Radio on Facebook or Michelle Torrance, the Rising, the Rising Goddess. Make sure you head on over to the Rising Goddess group on Facebook and come join us. We dive deep into so many amazing questions, journal prompts daily, we go live in there. We have fun. We dive deep into all sorts of fun stuff. So um, head on over there. Check us out. Make sure you leave your comments and questions or anything down below um, under this post on the uh, Facebook page of Michelle Torrance, The Rising Goddess. And I will go ahead and I'll catch you on the inside. Later. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rising Goddess Radio. Today, I am really super excited um, to have our guest on. Ani Baker um, is 
just an amazing woman and you listened to the intro. So I went in detail over, um, you know, her bio, where is she, um, what she's doing right now. But <clears throat> What we're going to dive in today is really just super fascinating to me, and it's an intense passion of mine, communication, sexual education, um, alignment, confident conversation, and all of that with families, partners, children, whomever. Um, and Ani is on a mission with what I've known just from kind of stalking her a little bit and how I was referred to her. Um, she's on this mission that is lined up um, with my mission, but in a completely different way that is just exciting as fuck. So, um, Ani, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to talk to you. Yes, thank you. Me too. Um, there's a, one question I love asking my guests at the very beginning, and that is, what do you love about being a human right now in this time and space? Wow. Um, I guess I love the possibilities of expansion, like the the first thing that comes to my mind is some of my two of my closest friends just had kids and I've been able to be around them and watch them develop like I've worked with kids sort of all my life and been around kids all my life but to watch like babies develop into toddlers is wild because every two weeks you're dealing with like a new human being mm -hmm. and it's kind of just a beautiful reminder that we're all so adaptable and there's so much to learn and experience and so many ways to grow and that's kind of just a big part of my life right now like I just I'm open and I just like want to experience and I want to learn and I want to see the world through ever expanding lenses, I guess is how I would mm, say it. Yes. No, I love it. I totally get that. Yeah. So I love that about being a human, just the possibilities of, of, you know, living so many lives just within this one life. Mm, gosh, that's so fantastic. And I love seeing that too. That's why I love conversation. Um, really just deep, intense conversations with people because you can really start to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and really yeah. look through their lens and their perspective. I've always had that curiosity ever since I was a kid. Like if, yeah. if I was in somebody else's looking through somebody else's eyes, would that tree look the same as me? Like how yes. I view it. Yes. You know, yes. does this blue look the same blue from their eyes as it does mine? And, yeah. um, you know, it's fascinating. The human, the human body itself is fascinating to me, but the energetic and emotional and mental capa um, capacities and capabilities and the intertwinedness of all of it is just really uh, amazing and fascinating. And so I, I'm loving, um, I'm totally getting you. I'm just totally jiving with you right now. Um, yeah. I just got chills because I <laughs> think like that as a kid too. I mean, it was a little more selfish when I thought of it. I always used to think like, I wonder if I, if I were like in another person's body, what would they think of me? Cause I was always mm -hmm. trying to like figure out who I was in the world. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, just like the, everybody exists truly in their own universe. Like you and I have such different experiences of the same thing. And that's, yeah, continually fascinating. Right. And that would just leads us down to, of course, the multiple universes level and we can go down Teal Swan area and, yes, you know, I, I know I love Teal too. She's been, um, I'm just, uh, I love her so much and her work is just so powerful. And I love yeah. the I love seeing all the different um, expressions of shadow work that I, that's coming about right now. Mm. Um, it's really exciting because it's light work that is expressed through shadow work. And I, it's just uh, fascinating. So let's get into this. Um, uh, I'm really, really excited. Um, tell us, first of all, a little bit about who you are. What's your background? Um, what experience, if anything, happened, which I know did, which we're going to dive into, but how did that experience come about for you and, and how did that evolve you into becoming the Ani that we're talking to today? Mm. So many things, but I think sort of like the big scenes of my life that have really like led me to this one is I was raised only child, um, divorced mother, born again Christian. Um, very, very, very strict fundamentalist environment. I was fascinated with sexuality. I didn't have a word for it yet, but yes. I definitely would like, you know, see clips of things I wasn't allowed to watch on TV and I really want to know more, but it was very, it was made clear to me that it was sinful. I wasn't to think about it. Lust was a sin. It's off the table. Mm, and yes. yeah, and that was reinforced uh, by sort of every environment I was in. I was very sheltered. Um, and 
And I, be, you know, disconnected from the fact that I became a teacher and I worked with kids at the elementary level. I've, I've worked in classrooms from preschool to ninth grade. And uh, when I went to school, I went to school to become a teacher for students with special needs, mild to moderate. So that's a, a lot of speech and language impairment, that's autism, it's emotional disturbance, um, a lot of like behavioral, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, needs. Um, and it wasn't, you know, the, I didn't like take my repression into education and look around and sort of like, you know, look for examples that sort of fit what I thought was wrong with the system. It all kind of happened very naturally. Like it was just something I noticed over time mm -hmm. while I was teaching that like, oh, you know, these kids are quote unquote too young to be saying the things that they're saying, too, too young to be searching the things that they're searching on the internet, too young to be saying what they're saying to each other on the playground and yet they are right and and you know the more and more they have access to the internet I remember like maybe third year before I uh, stopped teaching to focus on documentary filmmaking all every student in every class had a district provided iPad that stayed at school but um, they all now had like access to the internet in their hands and of course we had firewalls like crazy mm -hmm. but my like first graders got around the firewalls and they found like the one YouTube video that you know wasn't blocked that had sex and or violence on it mm. and it's just because these are really really deeply tied to human nature yes and it is a natural thing yeah and you know one of the things that I would have to, one of the conversations I would have to have with my students is like, what is and isn't appropriate to say at school. You know, if it were up to me, I would be like, all right, I, I hear that you are saying these words. Do you know what that means? Where, what, you know, where, where is this coming from? What are your feelings? Um, and just really educate them because clearly I think like once the, once the inclination, like the curiosity kicks in, it's time for education because now mm -hmm. if a kid is old enough to spell the word sex, they're old yeah. enough to see sex. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. And thank you so much for that because um, I fully support that so much. It's it, First of all, for listeners out there, I know so many of my listeners are really working through and dismantling the conditioned beliefs of sinful sex yeah. um, and anything other than missionary for procreation is terrible and you're going to hell and all of these things. Um, but the fact that it's natural and when we are raising our children as they're coming through, they're, especially the kids that are coming through now, they're awakened younger and younger and younger. They're coming through aware. They're coming through aligned. They're coming through knowing more and um, trying to shame or hold back out of your own fear or shame be, of, of talking with them through a natural state. Yes. Um, you know, this is just so important to understand that it's okay. It is natural and that there's nothing wrong and and right. um, when they do start to ask questions, when they can spell it, then it's time to answer that question. I was, I was pregnant with my son um, when my daughter was four years old, and she started asking, um, well, she, she wanted to know everything like medical terms. And so she wanted to know how the baby was made. She wanted to know how it came out. She wanted to know the name of the body parts and all of these things. And so by asking, by she wanting to, her, her wanting to know, I, of course, just explained it to her because why am I going to hold back something that is natural, that is normal, that is part of the experience of living this life? So, well, and now, you know, we're living in a time where parents and teachers are no longer the primary source of information. So yep. if you didn't have the wisdom to fully answer your daughter's questions, she's going to go find the information elsewhere and it's going to be piecemeal and yes. it's going to be scattered and it's going to probably be a little harsh. Mm. And, you know, and like the first glimpses of sexuality that kids have color their entire lives. Yes. So why not have those glimpses or those answers be from educated professionals who want to teach in like a kind way and I you know you say that you teach how to move beyond shame that's tied to sexuality and shame is there because the first time a kid says something that they truly don't even understand they're punished right exactly mm -hmm. and, and that colors their that colors their whole life and you know what's interesting about this documentary that I'm making is I've really had to grapple with the fact that what I am pushing for is better quote unquote sex ed in the school system, but it's like, I'm not even, 
it shouldn't even be called sex ed. I think so much of the taboo against teaching kids about themselves is because of the word sex that America just like may never stop being terrified of. Mm. That's not even what we're talking about. Like we're not, you're not, you didn't have a conversation with your daughter in which you were like, and here's, you know, like, you know, how to have good sex and like pleasure yeah. your partner because it's not, it's, it's scary. It's almost like calling it that makes it scary in a way that it absolutely shouldn't be. What I really want to do is teach kids about themselves, their emotions, their desires, their urges, their impulses, what they can and can't do with all of those things. And if that education started at an appropriate age, which let's be honest, I asked, you know, where babies came from at five years old as well. Like yeah. curiosity starts young. If we just started feeding people the appropriate information at that time, like the conversation about actual sex would happen so much later. You know what oh, I mean? Like, for sure. Because the curiosity at, at each different level, age level would be satisfied with, with a simple age appropriate, yeah. you know, answer without and without having the energy coming through you when you're giving this answer and I think that's what's so important is because once the when the question is asked that's why that's where you know my work comes in and helping remove the shame from being a mother to actually answer that question Um, because the energy will come through and the child will feel that energy before you even answer you know and so yeah I this is fantastic so go on go ahead keep going well, I mean, you know, I guess I can I can speak about it from two different angles, from my background as a child who truly was not educated, mm-hmm. and sort of my adult life learning how to educate myself, and then also as an educator. And sure. I guess I'll start as an educator. I, I spent a lot of my energy as an educator trying to repair what I determined to be holes in the system. Okay. Now, I taught students with special needs, so I had four grade levels in one classroom, which the, the setup for students with special needs is extremely discriminatory and awful. Mm-hmm. So like none of them will ever get a complete education. So it is the role of the special education teacher just to design a curriculum that they feel is reasonable because there's no way you'll ever be able to teach each level everything you need to know, which is unacceptable and also allowed me some freedom to determine what was important to teach. And I think that freedom encouraged me to be creative with what I taught and what I spent my time on. And I ended up having to ask myself like, all right, if I have four grade levels and I have to teach one fourth of like what all of them need, I have to really get clear on what they're going to take with them into their lives. And like, I have to pick the most important things. Yeah. And 50% of those lessons were just social emotional Mm. and you know teaching teaching kids how to express what they actually feel teaching kids to understand what it is that they feel Mm. Mm. and be able to label it and then you know understand what actions related to that feeling will actually create relief and what actions related to that feeling will create more pain you know and I would have to boil it down to really simple terms because I had so many levels and I had kids who just needed to be taught a certain way to grasp ideas so like I would, I remember having to boil down like right and wrong, like, you know, which is such a black and white, like public school system thing, like to teach right and wrong. And it's just like, gosh, how do you do that? Well, I guess what I can do is I can use the language helpful versus hurtful. Like Mm -hmm. that's something I think people can grasp in a simple way. So, you know, kids would act, if they'd get upset, they'd act out. And then we'd have this conversation like, can you distinguish between whether or not that was helpful and hurtful and they got it you know it was like oh that's true I guess that was hurtful what what would have been helpful so it's like I got really used to simplifying ideas and I I implemented an extracurricular program the year before I stopped teaching that was uh, under the umbrella of renaissance which is like an extracurricular sort of social emotional like uh, you know positive peer relations um, after school program mm-hmm. And my principal gave it over to me because I had been wanting to implement this program. And she was just sort of like, well, we have to find a sanctioned reason for you to like keep kids after school or come in early. And so our school adopted Renaissance and she's like, here, you get, here it is, do whatever you want with it. Awesome. And it, it was wonderful. Yeah. It was like, I, it was only for fourth and fifth graders and I taught kids meditation. I taught them 
what the word anxiety meant, how to, you know, identify when they were feeling it and stuff. Um, and it was nice, but it was every other Friday. It was like an hour before school and it, it just wasn't enough. Yeah. And even though for a while I was like, oh, this is cool. This is a step in the right direction. I still felt like I'm, I'm still working within this system that I really don't agree with for a lot of reasons that I won't even get into now because that'll take up a whole hour. But um, uh, I understand. I'm right. <laughs> I, I think you and I could probably have multiple hours of conversations about the education system. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it, is, it is so disheartening. It yes. is so and this is, and, so and well, and for my teachers out there, I have so many friends who are teachers as well. And yeah. it's the, the, my, my thought process on the education system itself has nothing to do with the personal fact of the no. passion of them as teachers. No and I think, no. and I think that's what's so important. And, and I think to kind of throw in there too, I know that you said um, a while ago, a little bit earlier that, you know, the main source of education for children now is really not the parent and the teacher. And I really find that so often, and maybe this has happened years ago when I was a child and I just wasn't aware of it because I wasn't a parent at that time, but I feel like that um, there's no, there's not a lot of connection between the teacher and the parent anymore, that it's not a team with as, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And I feel like there's, there's a lot more of finger pointing and you said, he said, she said, or blaming the teacher for certain things. And so, um, I know that could be a totally different topic, but I, I just wanted to differentiate for my teachers out there. It's not that I disagree with teachers as I disagree with a lot of the education system itself. Teachers are working their butts off. Yes, most definitely. Yeah. And it is just, it's, it's, you know, I think every teacher, every teacher I've ever commiserated with is like, they wish they could do so much more, but mm. there are 35 kids in a classroom yeah. and there are impossible standards that move so quickly. And also they're, you know, yeah, they're like, basically teachers are co-parenting. Yeah. With parents, like they have kids for half the day, yep. <laughs> you know, and like, and, and they are tasked with teaching them all of, you know, everything, like, other than what the parents decide to teach them at home. But, like, what is really hard is you don't have control over what kids are learning in there at, at home. Right. And there's no training to be a parent. And so that makes parenting extremely difficult. And yeah. Well, and that's all the more reason to learn to communicate with each other. Um, you know, and so it's, it's definitely, I, I, that's definitely another topic we can go down, but, um, uh, I'm definitely, um, you can go ahead and keep going because I'm, I'm definitely fascinated on how you got started um, with the documentary. Like, did you feel yeah. nerves? Did you feel anxious? Did you feel like, oh crap, am I actually doing this? You know, so let's get down, let keep continuing, let's continue to move down that road because it's, I'm just sitting here like staring out my window, <laughs> yeah. loving the story. <laughs> um, yeah, I, so while teaching, I tried to sort of like change stuff up and I, I, I hit a lot of walls, um, which I could elaborate on, but I just hit a lot of walls with trying to sort of like improve what I could, I guess. And so I, I, I met a friend and mentor a documentary filmmaker named Sean Dunn, who makes transformative, beautiful, educational, honest, real, important documentaries. His mm. first one that I saw was called American Jet Below. And it was just this beautiful glimpse at this sort of like marginalized society at the gathering of the Juggalos. And I remember watching it and thinking like, there's such reverence and love from on the part of the filmmaker here, because this could be a community of people that with the same camera pointed to the same footage could be used to mock these people. Mm -hmm. But in no way did he even come close to doing that. He revered them. He pointed out their beauty. He made them so accessible and so wonderful. And I went to another film premiere of his called Cam Girls, which again was this beautiful, powerful look at like women who work in the camp girl industry, mm -hmm. that sexual agency and just positivity. And I met him after that documentary, which just made me cry with gratitude. And I just told him what a fan I was of his of his work. I remember actually just a little detail when I first watched American Juggalo, an ex boyfriend of mine had shown it to me and I was like sobbing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not typically the reaction people have to that documentary. And he was just looking at me and he was like, you know, this is what you need to be doing, right? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> right. With that, with that much intense emotion <laughs> yeah. and passion, right? Yeah, exactly. And it really, I, I kind of, 
um, nobody had ever encouraged me to be creative before um, for any purpose other than sort of like personal fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I, I used to, writing was my main outlet, but I would never, there was a time when I've never considered like sharing my writing. It just wasn't, creativity was a champion in my family. So I remember like making a note of him saying that and I started to like contemplate that. Like, I wonder if I could sort of like express, you know, how I felt mm -hmm. via documentary filmmaking. Anyway, Sean became a friend and mentor of mine and I ended up telling him ideas I had about documentary films and he would give me feedback like, all right, well, here's step one. Here's, you know, one thing you can do. Cause I had this like list going in my phone of, of people and places and ideas that I wanted to explore in this way. Mm -hmm. And then I had the idea to, to explore the holes in the education system um, as they relate to students with special needs um, mm -hmm. in a film format. And I started like a change.org petition. It was sort of like hard to get traction about it because it's a subject that affects fewer people, which I totally understand. Mm -hmm. um, but I did get to a place where I realized that I wanted to build, if I was actually going to make change, it was going to have to be either next to or outside of the system, right. parallel to, mm -hmm. and I was going to have to have a platform. Sure. And I was going to have to make a, a voice for myself, which I was trying to do within the district. And it was just like, you know, I tried to build this website to bring teachers together and share ideas for the special ed community. And the district was like, no, you could put anything on the website. We won't let you do it. Oh, okay, fine. Oh. So like just a lot of roadblocks. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to try this, I guess. I started team teaching, which just meant sharing the classroom with another teacher. So I was teaching three days a week and had a couple days to start exploring, like, can I make a documentary film? I mean, starting from nothing, I had no experience. I had, I had done interview projects before on film because I was curious. I wanted to previously. Mm -hmm. I had lost all the footage. I didn't have, I didn't have experience. I just had a lot of passion for it and interest in it. I, I've always just like watched interviews more than I have movies even. I just love sure. to listen to people talk mm. about life. Yeah, <laughs> no, I get life. it. I know like words and just, just conversations. I yeah. just love watching conversations and just, yeah. I totally understand. Yep. Absolutely loved it. And mm. so I just started to sort of follow, you know, I started to, to try to think like an artist in that way. I still had my, my, you know, one foot in the teaching world. And I was teaching three days a week and it was a nice balance there for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I started to kind of just follow my passion, follow my impulse. I started to, you know, I did a lot. This is, you know, I did a lot. Of, I had to do a lot of work on myself and like healing and oh, sure. self-help reading and therapy. And like, you know, I have mentors in my life and I have a lot of people who, who help me because it took, for me, expressing myself did not come naturally. It always felt like selfish and it felt like what do I, you know what does my voice matter and I had to really heal a lot of that and learn to trust my voice and learn to trust my work and learn to bring what is inside of me out and so I was doing that simultaneous to teaching and then I was talking to Sean about this I had this very clear vision I wanted to do the, the sex ed thing had been on my mind a lot my I would my students actually were starting to pantomime things that I could tell they had seen in porn. Okay. And like, for instance, I had a first grader deep throating a pencil in a very deliberate way. Okay. And I thought, okay, so he, he had, this child has seen sex mm -hmm. um, or, you know, the inter entertainment version of sex. Right. Um, I would see like kids bending over in the classroom and like other kids running up behind them and like motioning, pumping them from behind. I was like, okay, this kid has been exposed to what they think is sex, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I had this specific vision of tackling the idea of not punishing kids of tackling the idea of better sex ed in America in film format with like a six episode arc where we explore sort of like sex ed laws throughout America mm -hmm. um and then season two we would sort of compare and contrast overseas and other countries that maybe are a little bit more advanced and that was one of the film ideas that I had talked to him about and he said uh I will executive produce that if you mm -hmm work on that right now and I was like wow. okay yeah it was a huge it was a huge push that I needed and so I was like all right well I'm gonna 
to see what happens here. And what happened with it was the path sort of started just laying out before me as, mm-hmm. as it will when you're doing something that you're called to do. Sure. And I remember just like feeling this fire of mm. excitement and passion. I would write about <laughs> this idea. I would just like wake up and write about it for an hour and I would plan things and I'd reach out to people and people were like, yes, yes, I will help with that. Oh, I have somebody that can be on the team. They'll work for free. Like I just kept getting yeses. Mm. Whereas everything I tried to do before. Aligned was, as know, fuck, right? Yes. 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 And sort of like the, the, the support started to come in from all angles. And mm. it, was, it was magnificent because I had, like I was saying before, no experience. Yeah. But there was, some, there was just, there was a universal pull toward this topic. And everyone I talked to confirmed, you know, that there was a need for this. And so I just kept, I would just take the next step. And that's what I've been doing for the past, like, you know, I started this project probably a year and a half to two years ago now. And I've just been one step at a time. In it. Yeah. Mm. God, that just gave me chills. You know, it's, it, it really is because I totally understand that process because once you truly surrender and just realize that you're just allowing yourself to follow your bliss, follow your impulse, follow your gut, follow your ing, whatever you want to call it. Right. You know, you're following that and you, you, you trust that you're going to get the next step because that's the only way you can follow it. Yeah. It's just one step at a time. And then you have to surrender to that knowing that you don't control anything else except being in the receiving mode to receive the next step when it's time for you to take it. Exactly. And yeah. And this is, this is fascinating and I can't wait. I definitely, and, and you know what I love so much as I was writing down, you know, um, when you brought that idea to him, and he said he would be the executive producer of that. You you instantly were presented opportunities to heal everything for you to become the being that steps into the time and space that you are now. Yeah. And the magic of that is just so palpable. I just really, it's like you can really, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can mold it. And I want women, people, humans, whoever out there to understand that when when you decide that you are going to listen to you and follow your joy, follow this curiosity that has been throughout your entire life that you have not allowed. For, I know, bro, for one reason or another, you know, you haven't allowed yourself to do this by taking that trust in following that. Um, all of the opportunities are going to present themselves. And like she said, it was like the yes man basically in the movie. I mean, all these yeses were flying at you. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the first time that I had ever experienced that really in like any area of my life. Mm. I really, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I uh, I don't want to say my life is hard because I, you know, I, I I don't want to complain, but I, I, I'll just say it was the first time that things aligned like that with any idea that I had or any sort of like endeavor. And that feeling of freedom, did that come when you felt that even though you knew like hard work is there, you knew that it was going to be the steps and even the hard work seemed exciting and fun and curious and, and, and and interesting. And, and it's like a, to me, I describe it as like a scavenger hunt. Mm, you know, oh, cause, yeah, because life is a game for me. I've got to find the joy and the fun yeah. and everything. And so the scavenger hunt is really the investigating part, right? The archaeologist yeah. in me, the paleontologist in me, like all this shit. Um, yeah, yeah. And that is is what happens when you start to to listen and and the feeling of freedom, even though it's waking up at six a.m. and working because yeah. it's not like this. Oh, I have to clock in in this prison of something I have to do. It's yeah this I get to wake up and get to do this yeah um yeah well you know what's funny is I I loved teaching so much that I will say I did have that feeling going into the classroom mm -hmm. so I I was very excited to go into the classroom and like face sort of like the puzzles that the day would sort of provide me with and and you know reach a new kid in a new way I really did love that so I I do feel lucky to have had that in my professional environment, the shift I think for me was actually a little harder. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel like, well, I've been doing this thing that 
has been challenging and now I'm free to do this thing that's passionate. For me, it was, well, I've been, I've been doing this thing where the path was very clearly <laughs> like, like I was, I was kept accountable by people that I worked for and I had, you know, while I decided what the curriculum would be for the most part for myself, I still had uh, benchmarks to hit. Yeah, sure. And if I didn't hit those, I wouldn't even consider not hitting them because I'd be letting down a classroom full of students who were my whole world. Right. Stepping out of the classroom and into my own life was very challenging for me because Mm -hmm. I remember... So I basically early retired. I did team teaching for one year, and then I actually just couldn't find a teacher. The teacher I team taught with retired, and I couldn't find another teacher who wanted to split the position with me. So I was left with the decision to either go back to full time and scrap the extra time I had had to start building this documentary, um, or leave altogether. Jump and fly. And jump yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I decided to jump mm. and. There was freedom in waking up on a weekday and going to a cafe. That was something I had literally never done because mm-hmm. I had always, you know, I, I was working straight out of high school. I went to school to become a teacher. I became a teacher right away. Like I yeah. always was, I had my career unlocked. So there was freedom in that. And I honestly, I devoted time every day to like figuring out what I liked. Like I would have to make lists like, all right, what do, what do I like to do that brings me joy? What Mm. movies do I like? What music do I like? Who am I? Like, who am I when I don't have to be accountable to other people? And for me, putting as much energy into becoming me or into my ideas that either could exist if I made them exist or they just wouldn't if I didn't and really nobody would be upset about it except for me, Mm -hmm. that was the challenge. Mm. It was like, I used to deplete myself yes. to help other people get better mm. and then when it came to helping myself get better I would just sort of be like well whatever you know I, I'll do it or I won't I'll just yeah. decide and I realized like wow I don't put even one tenth <laughs> of the energy into myself yeah, that I spend on or you know spend on so many other people mm-hmm. so I had to find the balance there and I had to learn to you know value myself and put myself first and and um I guess that was happening simultaneous to making this project happen too. And then also there's the the aspect of having no budget. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like I was saying before, it has aligned so that I have people teaming up with me who know what they're doing. And that has been truly miraculous. Oh, for sure. (laughs) I mean, all, you know, I think Abraham Hicks thinks it best when when she says, you know, um, all the cooperative components are being worked on your behalf. And it seems like miracles out of nowhere pop into your existence and out of your vortex, you know? Yeah. And these Um, people that you're referencing too have also been huge, huge factors in getting my head to the right space. I mean, mm -hmm. Abraham Hicks, there have been a couple of just, I mean, I've listened to so many of the talks, but I have, I'm just on the email list. So I get, yeah. you know, the, the snippets sent to me every day. Mm-hmm. And there have been a couple of those that have truly rewired the, the way that I think one specifically, actually, I think directly leads into what I'm doing now, which is that everybody in the world is subconsciously giving off a signal and everything in your life is responding to that. Yes, and absolutely. I, I remember being like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> I better get clear on the signal that I'm giving up. Yes. Oh my gosh. Right. Because yeah. it's like how, if, if you're, if, if all the shit that you want, all of your core desires that you're wanting to feel and achieve and be and live and expand and express are on 98.5, you know, and yeah. you're, <laughs> you're, you're partying over here on 97.6, <laughs> you ain't going to get your shit, That's you know, so it, real. you know? And so, yeah, uh, you know, Abraham Hicks was a big part of my, um, my healing as well. And, um, uh, I wanted to bring up, um, we're going to be getting close to wrapping this up soon, but there's a couple of things that I I really wanted to just kind of reiterate on the value that you brought to the conversation on this. You said two questions that you were asking yourself and um, I'm challenging all of our listeners out there to write these two questions down and journal these. These are two journal prompts. What brings me joy she asks herself, and who am I when 
I am not being held accountable to someone else. That one is going to be a triggering journal yeah. entry for so many. And I can't wait to hear all the anger messages that come through <laughs> because that one is definitely going to trigger into some beautiful activation thoughts. So um, those two questions, I challenge all of you out there to really journal those and be honest with yourself and don't judge your answers. Remember, journaling is not about judging. It's just about expressing, releasing, and then seeing your self come through the objective point without the taint of your ego or identity coming through. Yeah. Um, so thank you for those questions and that value, um, just in expressing that. So definitely go ahead and keep finishing and then we'll have some fun little questions and where people can, um, get in touch with you and follow along when this, um, documentary is and how they can help you if they want to be a part of this expression too. Sure. Um, you know, what I want to say on that, figuring out who I am when I'm not accountable, I, I struggled for so long and probably will always be curious about, the idea of being enough, what does that word mean? Like, uh, nobody feels like they're enough, but everyone says, you are enough, you are enough. And I realize now, looking back, it was my, my feelings of not being enough were just a matter of not putting energy into more aspects of myself. Mm -hmm. Because I felt more like a teacher and healer and, you know, pseudo parent for a lot of my kids then I felt like an individual because all of my energy was spent being a teacher and healer and you know five percent of it was spent being myself mm -hmm. and like myself out of that setting the other like you know feet building up the other aspects of myself so of course I didn't feel like enough because I was imbalanced I mm -hmm. lived for other people and I didn't live for myself. And so I learned that when I'm feeling like I'm not enough, it's because there's a denied aspect of myself that I just need to be giving more love and energy to. So mm. in taking, I took a full year and I did not work for the first time in my life. And I explored my other interests. And I learned what my favorite movies were. I learned who my favorite filmmakers were. I learned what kind of music I like. I learned what I like to do during the day. I learned who I liked to spend time with, how I liked to dress, how I wanted to do my hair. Uh, you know, like I, I, I took a couple acting classes to just learn how to express myself in new ways and see what that felt like. I just like learned who I was. Well, yeah, you invested your education in yourself of yeah. who of yourself yeah um that's that's such a powerful thing that that which is again why i think your documentary is so important because your main point like you said is you want to teach children how to um you know understand their body's oh, yeah. responses understand the normal listen to it understand yeah. you know all of that stuff so go yeah. ahead i'm sorry i'm just you're just oh, yeah. i'm loving all of this time with you right now so yeah same <clears throat> i um i think i i was taught and i know that this wasn't the intention but i was inadvertently taught to deny so many aspects mm -hmm. of myself yeah. um with the way i was raised and the type of religion that i and not just the label of it because no know, i understand i was raised with faith and fear instead of faith and love from a born again christian as well so i'm right there with you mm -hmm. there you go so so learning how to do that that's just i i don't look i have my insecurities that i struggle with now and they'll always shift and change as you mm -hmm. grow you'll there'll be like a new thing to sort of figure out but the the not feeling like enough isn't my battle anymore yeah which is just because i just started to you know fill that up so just mm -hmm. in it um t thinking about it from like a journal entry perspective i would mm -hmm. say if you feel if anyone listening to that feels like you're not enough just put more energy into that area you feel less than it it's mm -hmm. just about t it's just about focus you know yes. it's about attention and energy um so mm -hmm. i yeah i mean so i stepped out of the classroom i'm doing this I mean, this is my, my main creative okay. source. This is my main, this, I, I would like to switch into being a documentary filmmaker that makes films primarily that can sort of like shed a loving light on something that could 
you know, let's say benefit from a little extra attention, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Wakey, wakey, eggs and yeah. bacon. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I have a couple ideas of films I'd like to make um, that would impact the school system because I am an educator at heart. I, 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 I hesitate to label myself a healer, although I value being able to help people heal um sure. and and have experience in doing that and that that makes me feel very aligned and in tune and I, I would like to continue to do that um but I also you know I'm I'm sort of used to like fighting the fight so I would really love for this to be a lifelong endeavor of mine like I want to get new laws passed I want to get new curriculum passed in public school the cool thing is people are out there doing the work and yeah. making it happen from from their stand, their vantage point, their standpoint, they're using their power. You know, curriculum is being created and slowly rolled out. There are these incredible apps. There are people just on YouTube teaching sex ed. Yeah. But I do know that if we phrase it differently and if we just start new social conversations in like a strategic way that we could get better education fast in public schools. And that's my background and that's my interest because that's where the masses go mm -hmm. and we need to just be doing better for for the masses they're red kids are brilliant like the fact that your daughter asked you the question she asked you is just because you didn't cut her off and tell her not to ask those questions yeah that's how kids minds work for the most part you yeah. know yeah because they're they i mean they're they come in unfiltered, unconditioned, un, yeah. you know, then, then as, as they come into their environment <clears throat> and the people around them, <clears throat> and especially different generations from different lifestyles and environments and backgrounds coming at and bringing all of their ideas, all of their beliefs, all of their fears, all of their fuck ups yeah. and throwing them at the child, then the child just takes them on and then starts to filter their own stuff through all of that external things that has nothing to do with them. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, I, I definitely, definitely support your um your mission i support your project i support the energy and the intention behind it um because it's so so important for children to be able to realize that they are humans they can communicate you know it, it, it's like when when we get so angry at our at our children and i say we as the collective and our as a collective but we get so angry at our children when they express their anger or their tears or their emotions if they're having a tantrum or something is going on because we get angry angry at them for expressing that. But then if we're having a bitchy day or if we're having a shitty day and we're taking yep. it out on somebody else, we, we, we're allowed to do yep. that. So, um, this yeah. is, this is so much deeper than just sex education in America. This is so much deeper than just teaching and talking about sex. And, and, and I love yeah. how you said to like reframe it. And I, words are everything for me. And so I'll, yeah. I'll ask, periodically on my social media, you know, what does this word mean to you? How do you define this word? Because just the word clowning around or a clown can mean 12 different definitions to 12 different people. Yeah. Um, and so learning how to uh, perceive and receive a definition of a word that aligns with our personal truth is really where this is all coming and going towards. And um, I'm, I fully support it 100%. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And um, I know that there's teachers and there's, there's education staff out there. I mean, I was just talking to um, one of the office ladies at my daughter's high school and, you know, there's administrative staff who really make a difference in children's lives too. They go in there with this, this intense, with uh, intention of, of really being a part of these children's lives and making yeah. an impact in some way, shape or form. And so I know that there's people out there who, who have helped, but I know that there's more who want to help. So how can people get in touch with you to either help you with this documentary to continue to um, really awaken people to the education system and really put ripples and shifts in it for our future? Um, how can they help you? How can they reach you? Um, share with that, all of us, all of your stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think, um, I did start a GoFundMe a little while ago, which is still up. I haven't shared it in a while. Um, 
I'm not sure why. I've, it's hard to ask for help repeatedly. I, I'll just be honest. That's it. that's why I haven't shared it in a while. But there is a GoFundMe. That's gofundmecom slash doc doc, um, and it has information about the documentary and, and sort of what I'm working on. Um, well, I'm going to stop you real quick just yeah. because this is what I do as a coach. You allowing yourself to ask to receive for help allows and gives the opportunity for others to give. Yeah. Um, so just to throw that in there because your yeah. mission and your purpose is definitely needed. And so I know people will want to give if they know that you'll receive the giving that they want to give. So Okay. I mean, absolutely. I, <laughs> I, you know, I guess another way to phrase that is I can use all the help. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am. Um, we I all really... support you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, we are rounding the, well, let's see, on the 17th of September is our final shoot day for, I'm doing a short film project related to the feature length, which is just a little bit more accessible and is, um, uh, just an interesting way to frame uh, the need for updates and I'm really excited about that so okay. that will be done and then we'll be editing it and coloring it you know and just uh, finishing it up and trying to get it on as many platforms as possible and my whole goal is to open doors and connect with people that will allow me to explore this topic on a wider scale use my experience and use my passion for you know, passing curriculum in the future that, that helps our kids um, in an effective way. So like, can I really value connection with people if anyone is listening to this and you go, oh, you know what, this makes me think of this person who's also a trailblazing or who is like diving in, mm -hmm. connect me with them. I, the, the, the social media I use the most is Instagram. Okay. Um, I, my username on there is NimbleWill, N-I-M-E-L-E-W-I-L-L. -L. Um, and my name is on there, Ani Easton Baker. I also have a website, AniEastonBaker.com, which has an info as well. Um, I also have a Twitter, which is okay. Ani underscore Easton. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love being connected. Like even this conversation with you, I'm so grateful to Arden for connecting us. Like most this definitely me too. Yeah, this is so wonderful and inspiring. And sort of everyone I've talked to on this path has taken me to, to led me to the next step, which has been either just simply fulfilling and gratifying and sort of fuels the fire of what I'm doing or leads me to more help that I need on this path to, you know, to get this idea into the, the minds of the masses. And I will say, I do feel uniquely qualified to do that, having been raised in a fundamentalist Christian household, but now having a broader, I would say, headspace mm -hmm. sure. and worldview. And then also being in the public school system and learning how to finesse, you know, ideas to get them uh, to, to start making shifts. Yeah. 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 Um, to be yeah. open at least to, to, to be, be able open. to, to receive and, and understand why these shifts are so important. And, and, and we can even go take this another step further. I mean, this comes down to, to a lot of, you know, um, it can go down to politics too and who is in your superintendent board and, and, and all of these different things. Yeah. And, you know, so yeah. there's so many different tributaries that lead from this amazing river. Um, yes. uh, so for anybody out there um, who is really connected to what Ani is doing and feels like you really want to be a part uh, of this um, shift and this change because, you know, the education system is very important to you. You do have a passion for teaching children. Yeah. You do have a passion for all of this. So um, definitely reach out to Ani and any one of her social media platforms. Um, and, and if you know somebody, you know, yeah. it is, it's always like, Hey, you know what? I may know somebody. And even if that person that you may know, isn't that right person, that person may know yep. somebody. Absolutely. So um, just be open to flow and allowing it. And that's, that's what, um, you know, Annie, uh, Annie and I are asking you to do. So Ani, oh gosh, I, I know, you know, you're, you're out doing your thing and, um, you know, we could go on for hours, but, um, I, I want to let you go and get back to that work on you, but I do have some fun questions. Yeah. Um, just some simple ones, but, um, what was the last thing you Googled? Oh gosh, let's see. 
Oh, actually, um, I have a, a Google alert for sex education this morning. I read about this woman who created an app called Tabu, T-A-B-U, mm-hmm. which is like a sex ed platform. And I, I was actually Googling that just right before our talk. It looks absolutely incredible. Like the way that all of the topics are broken down and they have like medical professionals backing up all the information. And it's very like visually appealing. And this mm-hmm. woman was just featured in Forbes. Her name is Nia Davis. Um, and yeah, I was Googling her. Excellent. Well, I just wrote her down. So that is going to now allow me to Google her. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Um, what's your sign? I'm a Gemini. Mm. And I know that we get a bad rap, but, but, but I'm a Gemini. No, you know, it's funny. I'm a Scorpio. So, and my son yeah. is a Gemini. So I understand Gemini is yeah. just a lot of multiple dimensional things thickness within you. Yeah. Um, and Thank so that's, you. yeah, documentaries <laughs> is, is filmmaking is definitely a, a great path for you, especially as a Gemini, because of all the, um, the depth that is through you and the different ways that you allow yourself to express it. Thank you. My rising sign is Libra, which I don't know much about, but I feel like what I do know about it is Libra helps me to be like more organized and grounded in a Mm -hmm. way that maybe Geminis typically aren't. Do you know your moon sign at all? That is correct. That is correct. Libra is the scale. So you're balancing, you're harmonizing, you're, you're, um, when, when people are looking, your rising sign is really how people are seeing you from the outside, right? So people see you as, as, as organized and you've got your shit together and, um, your Gemini, um, allows you to be able to keep your shit together in multiple different facets. Um, Love that. My yeah, moon sign is Virgo. Oh, I'm, that's my moon sign too. So that is great. And Virgo, your moon sign is your emotional state. So your emotional okay. expression is definitely all Virgo, which is now like you're ready to go. You're wanting to express it, growth, advance, and all of that stuff like that. So I feel like there's going to be another advancement coming for you. I just got this rift of energy of, of excitement. So that's fun. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So guides are coming through today, but uh, what is the last um, spiritual uh, text or audio or, and whether it's spiritual um, or, or um, energetic aligned or, you know, something more than um, something other than not more, but other than a biography or fiction or something like that. Um. You mentioned shadow work, and I am a big fan of Lacey Phillips. She has a site called freeandnative.com, and I've done three of her online courses. Um, One is reparenting. One is opulence, because I need a lot of help, which is probably evidenced by being like, I'm afraid to ask for help. I I need a lot of help with the whole money realm, just like feeling comfortable with that. Um, Mm -hmm. And then another one is shadow. And I'm actually going back through and doing shadow again, and just yesterday... Uh, I got a, uh, I mean, I, I, I dove back in for this next round and, and was very enlightened and illuminated by it. Um, mm. so I'm doing that coursework. And then as far as books, I am actually rereading The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer, Ooh. which is a very helpful book. I need to read more about Virgo because hearing that that is where my, uh, hearing that that'll give me more information about my emotions is interesting, but the untethered soul is very good for not being overly emotional about things that you can't control and just mm. observing and letting thoughts pass. And that's been a very important lesson for me specifically because I can be I can be overly empathic and it used to like cripple me. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so now I've learned to, I've learned to observe rather. Yeah. You know, observing is such a key um, part of being human, especially as an empath. And I believe we're all empathic. It's just the different levels that we allow ourselves to be in this particular life that we chose to come down in this time. Um, And so I totally understand that because you get uh, understanding and learning how to differentiate between your thought and emotional process and the collective thought and emotional process that's coming through. Because somebody could be driving down the street and their emotional um, turmoil is so intense right at 
at that moment yeah. in time that you may tap into that and think, yes. and then that could throw you and trigger into an anxiety attack. So, yes. Um, I definitely understand that. I've got steps of um, helping um, anxiety and panic attacks because I lived with anxiety and panic, attack, panic attacks for many, many years. So I definitely understand that for sure. Yep, yep. Um, so, well, and then one last question. Yeah. What song or piece of music just embodies you in your being right now? Oh, shit. That's a really <laughs> hard one. I know you're like, fuck, one? Just <laughs> yeah. one? What the hell am I going to do with that? <laughs> but for today, right? In this moment in time, because that's all that really matters, right? Yesterday, we're no longer going to have, we only have one September 11th, 2018. This is the only one we have. Ooh. Um, you know, so this is a song actually that I... I, my friend and I met at this place called The Friend over on Hyperion the other night. It's like a really sweet, adorable bar, especially before 10 p.m. And But then when 10 p.m. starts, the, the DJ comes, it gets dark. It's just nice to see it in the light. It's like they put a lot of detail, they put a lot of that into the detail of the bar. Right. But the DJ came and she played this song that like lured me over to her from across the bar. And I was just like, what was that? And it's a song called Sonder by an artist called Ribongia. I might be saying it wrong, R-I-B-O-N-G-I-A. And I've been listening to it over and over. It's all instrumental, mm -hmm. but it is so expansive to me. Mm -hmm. And every time I listen to it, it sort of like takes on a different shape and it feels, I would say it feels maybe like the musical embodiment of my answer to your first question, which is like the possibilities are endless and there's so much like room to sort of like swim around and explore and it's kind of amorphous, but it's also like beautiful in, in its nature in that way. Mm. Um, so I would say, I would say this song called Sonder. That's a great question. Mm, and I love how you, I, I'm so glad you loved it. I love music is, um, is my soul and, and dancing is my language. Um, but um, I love how you rounded it back out just to the first question. And that really is. And so that we're going to end on that because that's just a beautiful spiral up into the next level of manifestation for each of us moving on today. So um, thank you so much, Ani, for your time. I had such a beautiful time and I can't wait for this documentary and I can't wait to see all of the shifts and changes, even the small little minute ones that some people mm. may think aren't big, but those are the massive change yes. makers. Yes. Um, so thank you for all you do. Thank you for your work. And thank you for sharing your time with us today. And everybody out there, go follow her, check her out, support her in with whether if it's financially, whether it's energetically, whether it's, um, you know, whatever you can do to send support and ask the universe to provide even more opportunities opportunities for her. Um, but supporting her in that will ultimately turn around and support you in your passion that serves the collective. So thank you so much. Honey. Messages. I do reply. I do reply. Yes. Send her messages. Talk to her. <laughs> Let's do this. So thank you so much. And everybody, I will catch you on the next later. Hello, my rising humans, and thank you so much for listening to this episode of Rising Goddess Radio. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I just wanted to come on here and say thank you. I'm grateful for your energy and your time. And if you haven't already, head on over to iTunes, download Rising Goddess Radio, rate and review us. And this allows us to go ahead and keep going in and sharing the value, the benefits, and all the amazing teachings that Rising Goddess Radio offers to so many more people. And if you haven't yet, head on over to Facebook to the rising goddess group come and join our group we're having a what we have a wonderful community we talk we share things we dive deep and we have so much fun so i'm so excited to catch you on the next episode have a fantastic amazing magical day later